So looking at this column, the numbers that we don't have here yet are 2, 5, and 7. Um, in this top box, we already know it has to be a 2 or a 5. In this bottom box, this can't be a 2 and it can't be a 5. This has to be a 7. And so this one has to be a 2 or a 5. We'll come back to this later. Uh, but let's look at this number down next to the 7. Well, two numbers that you're going to subtract and get 1, one of them has to be a 7, the other one has to be a 6. Um, that also gives us, in this cell right here, you have a 1, in this cell you have a 7, and the only thing that we're missing from this row now is a 4. So we know that that goes there. And that gives us some more clarity up here, which is nice. So I went in and I filled, went ahead and filled in some things that um, were obvious from that just because the blue numbers disappeared. Let's look at this fourth row now. The numbers that are missing from this row, we have a one, so we're missing a two, three, five, and six. Um, so let's look at this one minus. This is the only cells that have both of them missing. So this could be a two and a three. So if it was a two and a three, the two would have to be here because we can't have the two here. So in that case, this would have to be a three. So if it was a five and a six, again, the six would have to be here and the five would have to be here. So we don't have exactly these two number pairs, um, but they're not exactly the same two numbers, but we've narrowed it down. So this does an interesting thing. So it gives us what's called a number pair. This is similar to Sudoku if you're familiar with that. But in this square, it has to be a three or a six. And in this square, it has to be a three or a six. What that means is the three and the six have to be in these two squares. Three or six can't be anywhere else. So we can't have a six here. That's not a possibility. So that has to be a two or a five. So let's do a similar thing with the fifth row here. So we're missing, we have a one, two, so we're missing three and five. So this could be a three or five. Um, and then we're missing a six. Um, this can't be a four or six though, because the four can't be here. So the six can't be here. Um, and then we're missing a seven. So this could be a seven. So this has to be some combination of three, five, and seven. Um, we don't know what it is here. It could be just a three or five. We can't have the seven here. So this tells us something really interesting. What it tells us is this pair could either be a three and a five, or it could be a five or a seven. But one thing we know for sure is in this row, we need the five to be in this cell. It has to be in one of these two places. The five can't be here. So this has to be a six. And so we've narrowed that down. So now look, we know that this has to be a three. And so now that the possibilities for the three is out of here, we see that, well, the five has to be here and we know that the seven is there. And then you can see in our 90 times, we have to have the six there that gives us the three. And so now this isn't going to do it automatically, but we know if there's a three here and we're subtracting and getting one, this one has to be a two. We have to have a five and we have a two. So we're getting some place. This has to be a five. I'm going to go ahead and fill some of these in. Great. So we only have two boxes left. They're both in this row. So what's missing from this row? We're missing a three and we're missing a six. Well, this column already has a six in it. So that has to be a three and that has to be a six. And we're done.